what does this brown shoe have to do with your success, but more importantly, way more importantly, your significance in ministry? Next up, I'm going to teach you what I call the principle of the brown shoe. Let's go. Hey, welcome to God Dream University. I am Bob Upgren, and this is episode 14, episode 14, and we're here to help. Wait, actually, this would be episode 13. We're here to help you become more ministry focused, more Great Commission focused, either in the ministry that you are leading or your life in general. And before I get into the content of this baby right here, the brown shoe, the brown shoe, huh? Before I tell you what the principle of the brown shoe is, let me just take care of a couple things. First, thanks for taking the time to listen to this piece of content. I actually think this is going to be very, very valuable. As goofy as me holding up a brown shoe is, I think you're going to really appreciate what I'm going to teach you and share with you on this because I'm not just teaching in theory. I lived it. That's where the principle of the brown shoe comes. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this piece of content. And also, speaking of content, I got something free to give you. Five steps to finding your God dream. It's our way at GDU, at God Dream University, of helping you discern your calling and flush out the dream that God has for you. Did you know that God's got a calling on your life, not just my life, not just your pastor's life, not just some other person that you're reading or following. God's got a calling on your life and he wants you to use your gifts for his glory. Five steps to finding your God dream is just a tool I created, a video, a short video and a PDF that is designed to help that process. It's not the end all. There's other things out there. But I got to tell you, people have found great clarity in using this. So take advantage of it. The link is in the description. Pop in there and it's totally free. It's just my way of, of trying to come alongside you and lead you to experience the dream of a lifetime. All right. So that's five steps to finding your God dream. And now this is the principle of the brown shoe, the principle of the brown shoe. And this is going to be a little bit different episode because I'm just going to tell you a story and I want to give you one overarching position, uh, uh, one overarching statement, actually. So several years ago, um, initially I was just leading a sports ministry, but I wanted to do something during the season of school. And for our area, season of school is really September through May. And so the idea came to me of launching a conference. And we created a conference where we brought in the best, at this time, youth speakers that we could find, the best communicators, and also the best Christian people who had some form of engagement um, that people would be intrigued by. We brought them all into one place. We actually called the conference Five Stones based on David picking up stones and throwing them at Goliath and slaying uh, Goliath. And so we had five different speakers that would provide um, truth, provide teaching, and provide encouragement in our own walks to conquer the giants in our life. And obviously, Jesus is the one that does the conquering of Goliath, not us. That's a different video. Hello. But that was the name of the conference, Five Stones. And we brought in these five youth speakers. And we brought in people like like Tim Hawkins, who I still believe is a, is really the best Christian comedian on the planet. Um, I've done several things with Tim, and he is, I mean, let's face it, the guy's the best. Brought in Tim a couple times. Ryan Dobson, um, Dr. Dobson's uh, son, brought in Julie Lapley. Um, we brought in um, oh, Craig Gross from Triple X Church. Uh, we brought in great, great Bob Smiley, another Christian comedian. Um, and the list would go on and on. Mike Jankowski, um, who wrote a book, Under the Over, uh, Over the Underbridge, or Under the Overbridge. I'm not quite sure which one that is. <laughs> Take your choice. Um, but he was fantastic. He dressed up like a homeless person, and he documents um, how people interacted with him as a homeless person, but also how the church interacted with him as a homeless person. It's fascinating. So we brought all these people in. We announced it to our audience. We announced it to the people around us that we are doing this youth conference and all these great people are coming. And I think for Friday night, all day Saturday, Friday night and all day Saturday, I think the price was $55. I don't know, $55 or $65. It wasn't a whole lot. Um, and we get to the conference and registrations just weren't there. 
um, we were going to lose a lot of money and, and not you're not doing ministry to make money, but boy, it sure helps to cover your cost. We were going to lose a tremendous amount of money. And worse than that, we had some of the best of the best coming in to use their gifts to encourage people. And there just really weren't enough people in the seats. And I'm, I'm out in the hallway and people knew that I was leading this. And I had uh, a youth pastor come up to me and he was really frustrated. He's just like, I just don't get it. I'm so mad. Like, why are not... Why, how come other youth pastors and other people, other churches and other people just in general are not taking advantage of this? Da, da, da. And he goes on. And, and really, I think he's saying that to encourage me to say, hey, I'm with you. I just wish these other people were with you. Which it really, it, honestly, I think the, the intention of him saying it was, was good. He wanted to let me know he was with it, me, even though a lot of other people were not. And, uh, and I made this comment to him. I said, you know... I said, I think we've made a brown shoe. And he kind of stopped in his tracks and he's just like, what are you talking about? I said, don't get me wrong. And it's a lot probably like this brown shoe. This is, this is a pretty nice, it's a pretty nice shoe right here. I said, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's an amazing brown shoe. It's a beautiful brown shoe, right? I mean, we have the best speakers that you could bring in for this audience. It's a beautiful brown shoe. We've The literature shares about the brown shoe. The schedule is going to, um, you know, really uh, embolden the brown shoe. And don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful brown shoe. And then I made this comment, and uh, it's always stuck with me. And I looked at him, I said, but I don't think they want a brown shoe. You see, we had constructed something where we just assumed that, in this case, it was a youth conference, that kids would want to come and worship and hear faith speakers on a Friday night and all day Saturday. And they didn't. They didn't. Um, They might want to listen to him on a Wednesday night, which is more conditional um, to the current of the faith culture. Uh, But a Friday night and all day Saturday, that's going maybe a little bit above and beyond. And that's no knock to them either. I'm just saying that what we had constructed wasn't relevant. And maybe more frustrating, but also more important, what I had constructed, I think, was my forced agenda. It was my forced idea, I think. And that's never good. That's never good. I mean, there are scripture, obviously, the you know the flagship scripture is in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, right? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will make your path straight. And I kind of changed that scripture to say, trust in the Lord with all your heart, but also you got this. You can lean on your understanding. You can force your you can force your own agenda. And in an effort to really try and do something good, really, I mean, the ministry itself it made sense. My forced agenda was not God's plan, and it's a really important thing that we can, if we don't pray, if we don't seek the Lord, if we don't spend time alone with the Lord, so we can clearly hear His voice, we will contrive, we will create ministry ideas and agendas that are brown shoes. And they're going to be beautiful brown shoes. And they're going to um, they're going to be comfortable brown shoes. And they're to our eyes, if they're our forced agenda, they're going to look like really, really nice brown shoes. But guess what? They're brown shoes. And people don't want brown shoes. These kids didn't want a brown shoe. They wanted something else. And so we, we read that scripture in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. There's another one here um, in, I mean, obviously, Psalm 37, 5, commit your ways to the Lord and he will give you and, tr- and trust in him and he will act. Um, that's a great scripture. But there's another one right here. Proverbs 28, 26. I think this is the one that I was thinking of. Whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. And... I'm not embarrassed to say it because I think it was a part, a part of growth in my ministry. Um, I was I was forcing my own ministry agenda. It had, I think, a really good motive, but it was still my agenda. And the statement I want to leave you with is this. Your forced agenda will pale in comparison to God's orchestrated plan. Your forced agenda will pale in comparison to God's orchestrated plan. He does have a plan to use your gifts to minister to a group of people. 
um, he had a plan for even that brown shoe, I think, to shape me, honestly. But our role as ministers, as ministry leaders, whether it's somebody that's leading a church, whether it's a youth pastor, whether it's a worship pastor, whether you're leading your own parachurch or whether you're you're leading ministry in your own family or, or in your vocation or just in your community in general, our role is to seek him first and let him reveal unsearchable things to us. And so it goes back to that principle that I've spoken about in a different video that we need to spend time in private with the Lord and ultimately he'll present us as light in public, but really the secret to ministry. Ministry is truly an inside out process. And in this case, with the brown shoe and with that youth youth conference, if I had to be honest, I think it was an outside in process. I think it was my forced agenda trying to push it into God's plan. And the reality is, let me give this statement to you again, our forced agendas will always pale in comparison to God's orchestrated plans. So what is our role? Our responsibility in this is to seek the Lord and ask the Lord to reveal the ministry and the means of ministry and how he wants it to be initiated. It's interesting because we tried and tried and tried to get people to come to that. And nobody, I mean, it wasn't a complete flop, but we just didn't have the numbers uh, that we needed to have, nor the butts in the seat that we really wanted to have for the caliber of people coming in. It was hard, and there's a lot of heavy lifting. But then when you sit in God's orchestrated plan, you can literally say, boo, and people will come running because his ways are not our ways, right? I mean, his plan will come to fruition. And God doesn't need a social media post to draw people to a ministry happening. God doesn't need the best looking um, video, promotional material. He doesn't need any of that. He just needs us not to build brown, not to build brown shoes. He needs us to let him do the planning, to let him do the building, uh, to let him initiate the ministry. Our responsibility is to stay intimate with him and let him to reveal to us what we should do. So again, our forged, our forged ministry ideas, our forged ministry agendas pale in comparison to God's orchestrated plans. Trust in the Lord. Let's not lean on our understandings. Let's trust in him. And in terms of ministry, and in terms of life, he will make our paths straight. Hey, if you enjoyed this piece of content and felt like there was value in the content provided, or perhaps this information could minister and speak into the lives of other people, maybe even friends that you have, I'm going to ask for your help. Would you please subscribe to this channel so we could join hands together and lead people to become more ministry focused in their lives. Thanks so much. God bless.